Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's look at the probability density function when the a particle in a one-dimensional box is now in the second energy state, which we call the first excited state. You notice that its probability dens density function looks a lot different than it did when it was in the ground state. And so the difference now is that we take the Schrodinger equation for a particle in a one-dimensional box and apply the value for the n, which is the energy level, instead of n equals 1, now n becomes equals to 2, and that's the only thing that now changes in our equation but that will make a big difference in calculating the probability of finding it in that same range. So again, the probability will be the integral from the x1 to x2, where the, those are the limits of the region that we're trying to consider. And of course, we take the equation squared. This becomes the probability density function. We integrate that, and let's see what we get. So we, so we factor out the square root of 2 over L quantity squared, which is 2 over L. We get the sine squared of 2 pi x over l times dx, and then we use the identity that makes it look like this. Now notice the identity for the sine square becomes 1 half times the quantity, 1 minus the cosine of twice the angle, and that's why we have a 4 there instead of a 2. So when we simplify that a little bit more, this becomes equal to, notice that the 2's cancel out, so it's 1 over l times, and we can separate that into two separate integrals, the integral from 0.45l, 0.55L of simply dx, and then we have minus, let's leave a little space here, we have 0.45L to 0.55L, and now we need the cosine of 4 pi x over L times dx, and notice again I left a little space here. What do we do with that space? Well, we need the proper differential, we're going to need a 4 pi over L over here. And so we need to multiply times L over 4 pi so that we didn't change anything. We can put that in front. So L divided by 4 pi, like this. And now we're ready to integrate. When we integrate, we get the following. This is equal to, oh, let me close the bracket here, 1 over L times x. And then here we have minus L over 4 pi times the integral of this, and the integral of this would be the sine of 4 pi x over L, and evaluate the whole thing from 0.45 L to 0.55 L. If we plug in those limits of integration, we get the next following thing. This is 1 over L times here we can plug in the upper and the lower limits, so we get 0.55L minus 0.45L. And then minus, here when we plug in the upper limit, uh, let's see here. I think I want to factor out the L over 4 pi. Makes it a little bit cleaner. So L over 4 pi times, when I plug in the upper limit, I get the sine of 4 pi times 0.45 L over L, and of course the L's cancel out, and then minus the sine of 4 pi 0. Point, let's see here, and now I need to plug in the upper limit first. Let's put that 5, 5 there, and this becomes 0. 0.45 L over L, like this. And of course the L's cancel out here as well, and then when you look over here, we have a 1 over L in the front. We have an L, an L, and an L in the three terms. So those L's cancel out with this L over here. Now we can go ahead and simplify the rest. This is equal to 0.1L. And we need a calculator for the rest here. Again, make sure we're in the radian mode. We get minus 1 over 4 pi times... And when we calculate that, we get 0 0.588. And then we go minus, plug that in, we get 0 0.45. Ooh, we get the negative of that. That's interesting. Yep, so the negative of that. So negative times the negative 0 0.588. Like this. Now notice that this will give us a positive and then this will become negative again. So this becomes equal to 0.1L minus this quantity right here. So let's multiply times 2. 
and divide by 4 and divide by pi. And so that becomes, oh, and the L is gone. No L anymore. Wow. I got to be careful here. The L is gone. So it's minus 0 0.1 minus 0 0.0935. All right, so subtract that from 0.1, and we get this is equal to 0 0.00645, or 0.645%. Notice that is a much, much smaller quantity than what we had before, and of course it makes sense when we look at the graph. So in the first excited state, the n equals 2, you can see then, because the way the probability density function looks, there's not a lot of probability that we'll find the particle right in that region right there. And you can clearly see that it's actually less than 1% probability to find it there, and much greater probability to find it elsewhere. So you can see that it does depend on the various energy states. Each energy state will have a different probability density function, and therefore you'll get different results when you calculate the probability of finding a particle within a certain range of that box. And that's how it's done.